Okay, so t- we have Jonathan and Alexis. Um, we have an Amber Steel deck and a Sapphire Steel deck, which is a really fun matchup. Um, I'm very excited to see how this is going to go. Our players are starting by doing their hand altering where they uh, draw their seven cards. They're able to make some changes, whatever they don't want. They can send back, try for some new cards, maybe something they're more interested um, in having uh, compared to what they started with. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, so Emerald Steel, one of my favorite decks in the game. Um, taking a look at some of the cards that are going to be in this matchup and the cards that are in hand, a little bit of a different build than the ones that I'm used to playing, but... This one has a lot more characters to be played, uh, a lot uh, cooler things to be doing on that side of the board, while on the other side, we have uh, Amber Steel, which, you know, we're going to be trying to see some, sing some songs here, do some cool stuff, and in this matchup, I think I would rather be on the Amber Steel side. I'm not, I'm not super, super happy about being on the Sapphire Steel, because one of your problems sometimes can be if a deck gets out really fast underneath you and you don't have one of your cards, like grab your sword, you don't have your tinker bells, anything like that, is sometimes you can get you can get pretty far behind early and not find a way to catch back up. Absolutely. When you see uh, ramp decks like this Sapphire Steel, they sometimes take some time to, because they are prioritized, getting cards in their ink well. So it takes them some time to really get going. And they really, really, really shine in mid to late game. Whereas our, our Amber Steel is more of a consistent, just mid range sort of style of play. Yeah, but this is, uh, it, it's still anybody's game. I mean, the, the, the Sapphire Steel deck can definitely still play. Right? Oh, you know, absolutely. Yeah, there's, there's definitely still cards in, in some of the builds that are really good. You know, I mentioned Grab Your Swords. You know, um, if you have something like Fire the Cannons, Baboom, you know, multiple yes. copies of Baboom early, you know, taking care of an early Cinderella or something like that is a really, it's a big checkpoint yeah. in this game because that can be some of the biggest problems is if, if there's a good one drop out of Alexis into starting to sing songs as soon as turn two, that's where it starts to get really far ahead. And if you're going to see a one drop, Robin Hood is one of the ones where you're like, okay, I'm, I'm okay with this one until it gets shifted it's not that bad. Yes. Yes. He, when he is, <laughs> before he gets into his champion of Sherwood form, he is uh, pretty easy to, to deal with. Yeah, that card's a problem. Yes. But this one, it, it's played mostly as, you know, hey, it's, it's a good one drop. It's inkable, but it gets me to my Sherwood a lot, a lot a faster. A lot faster. Yeah. Absolutely. And even um, when, if we see kind of Amber Steel pulling ahead, um, the Sapphire Steel can turn on a dime. Uh, oh, I like it. I like yeah, it. Yeah, I thought that was good. Um, and it can, it can change the tempo of the game extremely quickly. So um, a lot of times with these Sapphire decks, they're not out till they're out. Yeah, you say you go ahead with the bare necessities here on, on turn two. And sometimes you can, against, against Sapphire Steel, generally you're going to snag a song. There's a decent bit of songs here, but it looks like with Jonathan's build, he's got a few more extra characters here, a little more lower to the ground in his build. So bare necessities whiffed there. It did. Surprising. Where these, it, cu- these cupboards were bare. There were no songs in here to have. <laughs> bare and bare. I'm um, playing Mr. Smee, a really fantastic steel character for only a cost two. is a 3-3 three, three quest for two. Um, but, of course, anything that powerful must have an Achilles heel. And if he is exerted at the end of your turn and you don't have a captain in play, he takes one damage. So we were talking about this the round before. I think Shmi is one of the better steel cards around. It's Absolutely. for rate. It's one of the best ones. But can we talk about how sad the ability is? He just he just wants his captain. He, he just, just wants to be led. He just wants his bro. He just wants to hang out. Absolutely. And they're not around, and it does a little damage to him. It's a little unfortunate. Speaking of that Robin Hood, there Captain he is. Sherwood, there he is on turn three. This is a little bit of the nightmare for Jonathan. No easy ways for him to take care of this Robin Hood this early yes, in the game. Absolutely. When Robin Hood... Banishes something in a challenge, you get two lore, and if he's banished in a challenge, uh, he gets uh, you get to draw a card. So he basically replaces himself. Um, we're inking another Smee, which is interesting. Although Jonathan's generally in a Sapphire Steel deck, you'll see Cogsworth Grandfather Clock, which has that resist plus one, which is able to kind of mitigate any damage that would be Mr. Smee, making it truly, truly strong. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, this version from Jonathan is actually probably the better Cogsworth version of this deck. Is you know, the, the version that I play, I have a little less characters in my you know two, three, and four slot, mm-hmm. and Cogsworth sometimes can not be that great besides the fact that 
you know, it sings a song, and every now and then the resist comes up. But when you have more two, threes, and fours, this is making Cogsworth a much more impactful card, which I kind of like, because that's always been a thing that I've struggled with in some games with Sapphire Steel, is I'll have Cogsworth, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to play this, and I, it's not really having that much, of, it's not having as much impact to say, like, my opposing opponent's fives, like this right. Robin Hood that's sitting here. And we see a Lawrence in play, too. Yes. Lawrence is such a fun card. I've been seeing people play him more than more because he's a zero four quest for two. As long as he has no damage on him, he gets a plus four strike, which is very powerful into a lot of matchups. Yeah, we we're just talking about how good this Shmi for three, a uh, three three Shmi for the questing for two is. Well, yeah. this is a this is a little bit better. This goes up to four. Yeah, Lawrence beats me. Um, Lawrence is going to take that one to start. Absolutely. So, looks like we're going to head and use the fishbone quill here. Mm -hmm. Thinking about what he wants to get rid of, I think you're going to want to get rid of one of these Haversons. Yeah. But so you have a backup copy if you want it, but you know the <laughs> aforementioned Cogsworth is going to come into play here. Grandfather though. Clock, resist to the entire board plus one, and he has Ward. So he's immune to some song shenanigans on Alexis's side. Yeah, really important that you can't have a Long Came Zeus kind of run into this right away or any of those immediate songs that would kind of punish you for this play. And, yeah, Cogsworth does a lot of extra work here. And then now we see Alexis going to go ahead and quest up. And this is a pretty big quest lead. We got 9-0. to zero. And this is what I'm talking about a little bit with these matchups. That's great. Yeah, having six lore on board, some very powerful characters. You have, you know, two, six willpowers and a four. Uh, I don't know how much Jonathan has, at least in terms of his characters. All right, so Jonathan does have one of, like, the wombo combos in the, the, the blue steel deck here where he has grab your sword and Tinkerbell and can yes. possibly do both of them here this turn. The thing is, is he's going to have to do a little bit more. So it'll do three damage to all the characters, so he can use that plus Shmi to uh, trade into the Robin Hood. He can maybe pick off the Lawrence as well because it, it won't have any strength afterwards because it'll have damage on it. And maybe this board gets a little bit cleaned up from Absolutely. that spot. I think Jonathan's really limiting the fact that he might have to give up his other Haversum here to do it, yeah. to not have any card draw behind this. Yeah, and that Hiram Flowersham card draw engine is just so essential in this deck. So it definitely, maybe, I mean, we had to sacrifice one into the inkwell, and it, it might have to happen again. But this combo, I think, will definitely be worth it. Um, Tinkerbell Giant Fairy coming out. One damage onto everybody. All right, he's going to go ahead and... He's going to use the damage to put it on Lawrence. He's going to trade. He's going to challenge the Shmi into the Lawrence here to take care of that. Now, there's one damage left on each one of the Robin Hoods. He's going to go ahead and keep back the, uh, the Drawer Swords because it would actually put the Cogsworth a little bit into harm's way. And I think that's something that he didn't want to have happen here. Yeah, an exerted Cogsworth is fairly vulnerable. Now, this does allow the Robin Hood to go ahead and put a damage onto the Shmi, though. Oh, and playing the Rapunzel, being able to heal up some of that damage and draw cards in the process is always feels good. Yeah, one of the more powerful plays in this deck. Rapunzel is not only a card that's super impactful now, I have a feeling going into set five, this is gonna you're gonna be seeing Rapunzel a lot. This is gonna be one of the more impactful cards that isn't from set five. I think Amber is, is posed to make some big waves in constructed and just great here. You see, getting to remove three damage counters, draw three cards here, a very, very powerful card. Absolutely. And taking out the SME was fantastic, giving Alexis some more lore. Uh, playing the Sleepy's flute now, so anytime we get songs, we're going to get lore there. So Alexis is in a really, really, really good spot here. Um, we talked earlier, though, about how um, sometimes Sapphire Steel gets some time to work, but it Towards this later game, it has huge moves, huge characters, your Tomatoas, your Lucky Dimes. These can make such a huge impact on, on this play. Yeah, we'll see how Jonathan wants to do this to start. I didn't catch the other cards, and he still has that Grab Your Sword. Yes. Here, it looks like an Argus was the last yeah. card. All right, so here we go. This gets to be a pretty big, impactful turn. So Tinkerbell is going to trade, I'm sorry, challenge into the Robin Hood. Then he's going to deal the two damage to, I guess, the Robin Hood as well. The damage is going to go into this, and then Grab Your Sword is going to help clean this up quite a bit. Like Argus, right. and then Grab Your Sword is going to get sung. Mm -hmm. So this is going to go ahead and take care of both of the Robin Hoods. I love this patience from Jonathan here to be able to take care of both of these, leaving Alexis with just a Rapunzel in play. 
Yes, with two damage on her. Um, yeah, just that being able to make those moves, think ahead, know what you're going to do is just fantastic. And that Argus, I mean, he only has one willpower, but he can do four damage. And with the resist plus one, that puts him as a pretty, pretty fierce contender. Yeah, it's a it's a card in Blue Steel that they've been playing as answers to a lot of the early drops out of other decks and stuff. This isn't really a matchup where it like necessarily shines. It does, you know, trade really well and challenges that works out well. But you know what's better than one Rapunzel? Two of them. Yep. So we got two drawing two cards here off this as well. I'm gonna go ahead and all right. So along comes Zeus. He's gonna take care of the Tinkerbell here as well. Nice song to be sung there for Alexis, and he's starting to get back up on the board quite a bit here. Ariel, so this this is the card where it's really going to get the stuff going, too. So another card that I think is going to be absolutely great with set five here as well. Ariel's going to go ahead and find a song off the top. He's going to be able to sing practically every song in Alexis' deck. I, most of the time, they can sing every single so song here. Now, yeah. the, now the flute gets active. The flute's going to be active again next turn. Uh, this is how Alexis' deck really gets humming. Absolutely. Um Gaston Intellectual Powerhouse coming down. Some of the best art in the game. And I love that that, that is, you know, the most un-Gaston is him being smart. Great name. <laughs> great art. Just no notes. When I look at the cards, <laughs> no, notes. no notes. Just yeah. absolutely perfect. Yeah. Um, he quests for three, and when you play him, you look at three cards at the top of your deck and put one into your hand. So a lot of these Sapphire Steel, we use a lot of cards, especially in Sapphire, that allow you to kind of comb through your deck, find the resources you need when you want them, and such as like develop your brain in this one. And uh, there's also a queen that does something similar. The dig a little deeper thing together that we saw last game. Yeah, we see a lot of that here as well. You know, Gaston does it as well. Like you said, uh, you know, if uh, we haven't seen if there's develop your brain in this, you know, you've got po uh, popsicle stuff. So just Jonathan a lot on keeping the cards coming. As, yes. much, as much as as much as he possibly can. You know, we, we haven't seen it yet, but there's a whole new world of these lists a lot of times as well. Yes. So Jonathan wants to make sure that once he gets his ink advantage by playing these one jumps ahead, using these pop, so, I mean, using these fishbone quills, that he has cards left over or can draw a ton of cards quickly to make sure that he gets to use that ink advantage instead of just running out of cards. Absolutely. And we have not seen the one jump ahead. Or I'm sorry, not the one jump ahead. We have not seen a whole new world yet. I assume it's there with the way that Jonathan's yeah. deck built, but... I, I, most Sapphire Steels will be running it. And look, we got another Sleepy's Flute. So now each song will be giving two lore to Alexis. Yeah, which means Alexis gets four here this turn off of that well, the Storm Rage on plus the Rapunzel quest. Rapunzel's mm -hmm. done its job. You can go ahead and start questing away with this. Yeah. Your opponent wants to challenge this. Think you're completely yeah, I was about to say, I would do the same thing here. I think, I think, the sh I, I think you have to just start questing as much as you possibly can here because these flutes... They're, the, they're so inevitable. You're at 17 now, so all you have to do is pretty much sing one song or quest with one character for the rest of the game, and right. you've got it one. And Ariel would be happy to do that anytime. Sign her up. She's ready. So it looks like, okay, so uh, Titan's going to go ahead and take care of a sleepy food. That's a big play for Jonathan here. If he's able yes. to clean up this board quite well, mm -hmm. that's going to slow Alexa down by possibly a full turn here in winning this game. And that's huge for Jonathan, but Jonathan's still at zero lore. Yeah, yeah, the zero is 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 a hard a hard turnaround to come back from. But I mean, there are cards in his deck that could continue to make Alexis's job harder. It's just a matter of if he can catch up. The grab your sword. All right, so it's going to put one damage on the Gaston, two on the Cogsworth, but that's going to, more importantly, get another lore here exactly. for Alexis. So moving ever closer to that 20. Mm -hmm. Jonathan playing the Fortisphere. A McDuck Manor would have been great a while ago. Um, the McDuck Manor is such a tanky, tanky boy. Um, it has nine <laughs> willpower, which is basically infinite willpower against some decks. Uh, it's just so hard to take down. It, it has two passive lore, uh, but uh, oh. Yeah, that's that's yeah. going to do it for that game. It's like a, a whole new world, so that's going to allow him to use the flute, plus any of the cards that he draws off, he's going to be able to he play a barely, character. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Jonathan's going to keep a three-card hand here, it looks like. He's got some powerful ones. I see a Fishbone Quill, a Haversome. It looks like he wants to keep a Cogsworth here as well. And that kind of makes sense. You saw how much Cogsworth, how much heavy lifting it did in that yeah, last game. Yeah, he got a lot of value out of that last game, for sure. 
Um, and he, he did sing ba send back a whole new world. Um, some of these larger, unankable cars, yeah, he, they can clog up things a bit. Yeah, that's, that's a really good point. And to add on to that, Alexis has a whole new world in his deck as well. So right. at, at one point when you both have a card like a whole new world, it's probably correct for one deck to shy away from playing it if the other one is incentivized to do so. Yeah. Because now you don't have to keep that card in your hand. You don't have to spend time or resources on playing it because your opponent's just going to do it for you. Though getting to dictate when it happens is kind of important as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and also when both players kind of have it, it becomes a sort of game of chicken where it's like, who's going to play it first? And it's like, like who can get the yeah. most value out of it? It's like, are you going to do it? Am I going to do it? Like, <laughs> right. It's a nice little dance on who's going to play a whole new world. Absolutely. And both our players, uh, looks like they have Grab Your Swords in their decks, which is another great kind of large unankable song. Uh, Alexis probably has a better chance of uh getting some use out of that yeah, was, early yeah we've seen some people make some deck choices this weekend around the, this card in particular talk about grab your sword um a card that was very 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 popular in this format pre-bucky nerf and we've seen it kind yeah. of come back a little bit you know decks that were running four or three or two of them are now running you know three two or one of them like one you know one less maybe two less and so that has given a rise to some of these decks that you've seen where you know We've seen these decks be a little more aggressive. You know, we saw Dakota Cotton earlier playing a very, very aggressive deck where almost all of his characters die to grab your sword, but he's like, I'm not expecting to play against that card a ton. Yeah, you know. for sure. All right, we've got a queen on one, a popsicle on the other side. And uh, a textbook opening for a Sapphire Steel. Absolutely, and uh, I always get really worried when these decks lead on the queen. Um, her shift queen, while only being a 4-3 and having kind of a fragile body, the, uh, the effect... <laughs> That, dangerous. Oh, yeah. <laughs> can absolutely flip a game on its head. Oh. Her sister's here, and we also have Robin Hood. All right, we got the triple one-drop start from Alexis here. So good starts from both players. Absolutely. Uh, lots going on on both sides. Tons of items in Jonathan's hand this time around. So if he yeah. does have a have or something, he's going to be able to do a lot with it. But we'll have to see. He's going to have to... We'll say I, I've got to believe he's going towards the fishbone quill here. Yeah, this yeah, that would make sense for a turn three play. I always wonder playing these sort of ramp decks is like when you see your opponent putting all this stuff on their board, all these characters who are going to be like free to quest, and you're like, "Is oh, I'm getting nervous," but they know what they're doing. They know the cards they need to play when they play them. And turn three, fishbone quill. Yeah, speaking of knowing what cards you need to play when you need to play them. Getting the fourth ink of the player here is super important because you grab your sword is in Jonathan's hand here, and that is going to be unbelievably impactful on the board if it stays anything similar. Like if we don't have a shift to a bigger version of one of the characters that's in play. Right. If we don't have that happen, there's a chance that Alexis loses all of his characters here next turn. Yeah. Epic. So I, see, I see Rapunzel, and I don't think I see any of the big shift stuff for Alexis here. So we'll have to see how bad this grab your sword is going to be. Oh, wait, I think maybe... Nope, I thought that was a Robin Hood for a second. I think it was a flute. <laughs> yeah. I thought I got... I saw the gray. <laughs> Which we like, but maybe not right now. Yeah. Uh, Blue coming out. Also a very fun card. I've been seeing it played a lot more, which I've loved this card since it came out. It doesn't have any strength, but it has that three willpower and a quest for one. Um, it can be a bodyguard, so you're forcing your opponent to come through it. And when it's banished, you gain two lore, which is huge. Yeah, lots of like about this card, the fact that you can play it early to protect your, you know, one and two drops to where you can make sure that you get to uh, shift onto them possibly later. They get to stay around. They get to keep questing. It can protect your singers, which is really, really important as well. And then you still get value from it. If you were to play it and say, like, Jonathan had something to challenge here this turn, he has to challenge into the blue. And not only does it protect your, your other characters, you gain two lore for it on the way out, like you were saying. Yes. So, yeah. Definitely can love this card sometimes in these spots. Yeah. Uninkable is probably its, its main downside. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always scared on how many uninkables I have in my, uh, in my decks. I try to shy away from having too many. I also play very conservatively with there. I've been, you, you have like three uninkables in your hand and you can't play any of them. Yeah. And it's happened to me too often. I mean, it's probably a fairly universal experience, and it's not fun. I will say, I think we've all been there. We yeah. all feel your pain <laughs> yeah. right now. <laughs> Looks like Jonathan exerting his fishbone quill, able to ramp, and we see five, and that is the grab your swords, doing damage all the way across Alexis's board. Only left is blue. 
Yeah, this actually sets up pretty well for next turn as well. I think there's a Tinkerbell already in Jonathan's hand, and this leaves the two damage on the blue, and the Tinkerbell will be able to clean this up. Plus, you know, if there's anything else from Alexis that possibly is one of the smaller characters, you might be able to pick that off as well. But it looks like a second blue here. Two blues. Hey, that's eh, kind of rhymed a little bit. A little bit. So now there's that four potential lore there when those get banished, which is a lot considering they have no strength, kind of just hanging out. Um, but Jonathan, interested to see what he plays here. Uh, we mentioned the Tinkerbell being able to take everything out. Um, I see he also has the Grandpa Coxworth. He has the Flavorsham. He has not been able to get Flavorsham online uh, during this match for his card draw. Yeah, it's always interesting to see the Sapphire decks when and where they can get the Haversums and how impactful they can be. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like a lot of the decks over the last few months have really started to figure out how to punish or make that card non-desirable. You have brawls. You have cards that are taking care of it. Or you learn to put enough things into play that... If they were just play Haversum, draw two, draw two cards off of it. Like that's not good enough. You're not doing. You're not actually progressing your board enough. You're not, you know, questing enough for lore. Yeah, you're drawing cards, but I'll just quest up another four or five this turn. Play a really powerful song. Play a really powerful character. And yeah, you're going to draw these cards, but you're taking up all this time doing that. It's still yeah. an absurdly powerful card. You know, we want to play this when you get to have the start of like popsicle into one jump ahead into Haversum. There's like not yeah. many decks that can keep up with that. That's one of Absolutely. the best openings this game has. But finding the right spot to put it in is, is interesting. And yeah. this is something I thought might happen here. What Jonathan's doing here is he's going to go ahead and play the Cogsworth and try to get a little more value off of that Tinkerbell possibly in the future because yeah, Blues are questing for one apiece, but it's only five to zero right now. And we saw right. last game you know, it was more like 10 to 0 at this point, so this game's Absolutely. a little more manageable. Yeah, for sure. Definitely, because that extra resist is just mm, so good. And uh, Jonathan, he's been playing this Cogsworth when he needs to play it. It's been so beneficial to him. Um, so really love seeing that. Yeah, so see, I was trying to catch which card he put into his inkwell there, because he also has a baboom in his hand. And depending I saw on that. Depending on what characters are left over, but for Alexis next turn, you might be able to use Baboom plus Grab Your Sword to kind of sweep mm -hmm. up the entire kind of board here. Yeah. All right, so Flute gets played. Questing with both of the Baloos, and so now um, anytime Alexis plays a song, he gets a lure off of that. And if that's all Alexis really has going on this turn was play a flute pass, if I'm Jonathan, I'm feeling pretty good about where I am now. Yeah, uh, any any turn that passes where an Amber or Steel Song deck does not play a song is not a great turn. And so this is kind of ideal. He gets to play Tinkerbell and then challenge the Cogsworth into the Baloo that would be left over. So now there's no characters left over for Alexis. Yes. He's only at seven lore here, so this flute is actually not going to have the impact that he wants to have it on here. I think Jonathan is well ahead here now. Plus, he's just got a half or some in his hand here to start drawing extra cards as soon as next turn. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's a great place to be in. And also, anything, if Alexis wants to play a song this turn, he's going to have to spend oh, exactly what we saw right here. Unfortunately, Alexis had to spend ink when you, it's always great, better to have a singer sing a song. So, taking five damage, um, taking that out. But we did get the lore off of the Sleepy Flute. Don't forget about that resist one coming in clutch here this turn as well, Absolutely. keeping that Tinkerbell around. Yeah. So now she's just very damaged. Yeah. Haversum going to come and draw two cards as well. So now the card uh, quantity is going to be flowing for Jonathan as well here. Yeah, it feels good enough to go ahead and start questing. You're going to get on the board here for the first time itself. And I think I see like a whole new world, I think Fire of the Cannons. And is that another Tinkerbell? In the, it, it, the movement is very fast. On yeah, the I, no, I think you got it right. Um, you don't see Fire of the Cannons a ton these days, but very, very excited to see that. Yeah, Jonathan has a very interesting build here. I'm actually kind of digging it. Like I need, I, to, I need to come get his deck list from him. Yeah, no, it's super cool. I love those like little damage. Oh, and... Bigger damage. We have the Grab Your Swords coming down, which will do, it's finally taking out that Tinkerbell, doing just a little bit of damage because we still have that resist on everybody else. And Alexis slowly, slowly getting that flute, getting them lore because there's nobody on the board. And this is one of those spots, you know, we talk about this a lot, where there is a giant lore advantage, right? Alexis is at 13, Jonathan's at 4. But I actually think Jonathan is 
extremely far ahead in this one. Absolutely, especially with the drop of the Tomatoa. Just incredible. He gets an extra lore for every item in Jonathan's hand. He's he's using the Hiram to banish the popsicles, to draw more cards, to, to feed the Tomatoa. It's going to be crazy. <laughs> I was going to say, you make, you make a really good point here. I think it's unbelievably uh, good, and it's a, it's a very good engine in this deck that we talk about a lot, where yeah. you can use Haversome to cash in one of the items, yes. and then quest with Tomatoa, and like, yeah, you lose one lore, but you're gaining the item back, and right. gaining two cards. So, yeah, it's a really, really good spot to be in. Alexis playing the Ursula Vanessa. So he does have a singer. Ursula, unfortunately, only a singer for, so she could do a lot of the singing, but not all of the singing. It's a little too little, too late here. Very uh, likely. Me, I think. Yeah, I was going to say, this board is in a dominating spot here for Jonathan. Uh, Jonathan has so much ink, and he has so many good cards in his hand right now. I see he, he drew a Beast Tragic Hero, which is excellent. There's a lot that it can be done here, and... Alexis, I mean, he doesn't really have any sort of board wipe or anything that could really do a lot. I guess the grab your swords, but even with the resist, that's not doing much. So, <laughs> I mean, let's, let's talk about exactly what just happened here. So, Thomas of a quest for, you know, some amount of lore, gets back a popsicle in, in Jonathan. Jonathan plays a popsicle, draws a card off of that. Then he quests again with Harrison, draws two cards off the popsicle, going back to the, to the discard pile that's yeah. going to just get back by the Tamatoa again next turn. Like This alone is probably enough to carry him through the game. Not to mention there's a Cogsworth in play. Now we've got a Sad Beast in play. We've got an Argus in play. And he's just sort of dumping the hand here because he has so <laughs> many things. And it's like, yeah, look, you can, gra you can grab <laughs> your swords. You can do whatever you want. I don't care. I've got so much stuff here. Yeah. Resist is going to be doing a heavy lifting here, and I don't know if Alexis can even make it out of the next turn. Honestly, that's exactly what the Sapphire Steel wants to do. Get all the resources, play everything, get all of the lore. Um, and that's really, really what's yeah. happening. Like, Alexis' deck is one of those decks that it chips away, right? It gets two, three, four lore turn as the game goes on. Yeah. And Jonathan's deck is the deck that I'm going to have all of the lore for, like, two of the turns. Right, <laughs> exactly. And then, it's gonna, and then the game is going to end. Yeah, but uh, Lex is doing some quick math there. Yep. Shaking hands, fantastic match. Looks like it's going to be a 1-1 one, one here for both the players. And mm -hmm. yet again, another ex great example of, like, the decks doing what they're supposed to do. You know, Absolutely. like, you know, we saw, you know, Lex's deck be aggro in one of the games, come out early, sing songs for cheap, and really just get on the board and do what 